This is Katie Burns and you are watching Live Well. I'm a licensed mental health therapist and we had so much fun last week talking with Greg Smart, the pastor here at First United Methodist Church that we decided to keep the camera rolling. And I hope you'll join us again to talk about embracing joy in any season because I wanted to continue talking about uh, the relationship with God, um, acceptance, you know, what it means to have a relationship with others and not use God as a band-aid. And one thing that we really didn't get into was, you know, how important it is to read your Bible, which I know that you hear a lot. Everyone says, read your Bible. Um, but sometimes it's hard to find that quiet time or find that time to be still. Mm -hmm. And so one of my tricks that I thought that I would share with you guys is you can get audio versions of the Bible. Mm -hmm. I have one by Thomas Nelson um, that I listen to. It's the New King James Version. And I like the reenactment by the actors. It, it makes um, Deuteronomy and <laughs> a little more entertaining. <laughs> um, the genealogy even was able to get through that better. Okay, I don't believe that. No, it was a little bit better. <laughs> and so that's, you know, I'm a big fan of the Audible app uh, that you can get on your smartphone. You do pay a monthly membership, but for me, I go through so many books that way because I drive a lot. And that's a way for me to get in that good information that I was talking about because I'm always asked, how do you read so many books? It's like, well, I drive a lot and I listen to all of my books. I rarely get a hard copy book, sadly. I'm, I love that as a graduate student. <laughs> I loved the hard copy, but I can't sit anymore. Oh, if I sit, I'll probably fall asleep. Yeah. Anyway, so back to what we were saying. I don't know where you feel like we should pick up more on going back to the Band-Aid type where we tell people, I'll pray for you. You're, you know, God's got this. Mm -hmm. Stick it on. Don't worry. And having to do that work or more about the acceptance part of accepting your season. Because last week we talked a lot about seasons mm -hmm. and accepting, you know, I'm in fall, not in spring. Um, and to me, fall is about harvest, mm. give me my fruits. So fall is so short. <laughs> <laughs> um, winter is so long, summer is so long, <laughs> spring when things are blooming, fall when you're harvesting is like this little bitty blip. And don't we all just want it to be when the flowers are blooming right before the allergies hit? <laughs> <laughs> uh, as someone whose wife has terrible allergies, yeah. I get that. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. See, I would say already that your idea of fall is kind of limited. You think so? Yeah. Okay, tell me more. Uh, I, I mean, the harvest is very real. Yeah. And, of course, I grew up in a city. It didn't mean much to me. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, out here, it's very real. Yeah. Uh, but you've got the changing weather. Mm -hmm. You've got the colors. Mm -hmm. Um gee whiz, living where we are, I, there's football uh, <laughs> that has Pumpkin to be mentioned. Pumpkin spice, uh, yeah, I mean, wooden then, apple barn. Then it, as the leaves are dropping their trees, yeah. um, then you start getting into holidays that mean a lot to yeah. people. Uh, it's the end also of one aspect of work uh, and the beginning of another. See, I was thinking beauty before death. Okay. It's not too dark. You went there, not me. <laughs> well, it is. I mean, it's so beautiful right before the death. And well, that's what's happening. They are, I mean, they're not technically 
the leaves are dying and falling off. The trees themselves are not mm -hmm. dying. They still right. have their wonderful root system right. that keeps them alive through the winter. There you go. Uh, but the leaves, or maybe the shedding mm -hmm. of what was, right, and then going into well, and the season we, of rest. You, or yes, and, and I would say there's both of those. You've got uh, whether it's a change in careers or a mm. retirement. Mm. It's your a good work, one. Your work changes. Right, or empty nest. Yeah, I mean the nature of your work changes. Mm-hmm. You know, whether it's paid work or daily work, the nature of it changes. And to accept where you are, and this is my work now, yeah. and then give yourself to it. Why well, that's, not? that's big. That's a big concept. Yeah, it the is. Cha the nature of the work has changed. Yeah. That can apply to so many people mm -hmm. that struggle with that. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of ways I'm struggling with it. I'm checking them off right now. Okay. But the nature of the work has changed. Yeah. 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 And then, and then it goes into, uh, as you said, a season of rest. Mm -hmm. um, I had, uh, I was talking to a couple and, and uh, you know, they're dealing with health issues as they get older. And I am constantly just, just so blown away. Uh, impressed doesn't even begin to cover mm -hmm. how I feel about the things that they have done in their life and how hard they have worked and the gifts that they have been to other people through their work mm -hmm. and 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 they were kind of talking about where they are now and I said well maybe this is your Sabbath Maybe this is your time to rest and just enjoy what, however much life you have left. The work and, you have and done. And spend that with God. Maybe yeah. this is your season of Sabbath. Oh. And I still remember uh, the wife said to me, she said, whoa, uh, what we always hear about is we're supposed to be busy every minute for God. And yes, that is true. And you could almost see them visibly relax since then. Mm. Huh. And they still do things. Yeah. They can't help themselves. But, yeah. Yeah. but just to accept that it's okay that at this stage of life with some physical, you know, uh, uh, limits, mm -hmm. then maybe it is okay. And just accept that, you know, my role now is to enjoy. It's different. And, and that's the joy. Yeah, just to be. Right. And whatever I can then be for somebody else who maybe they just need to share something or they're struggling with them or, or they just yeah. want to hear a tale that inspires them, mm -hmm. maybe that's okay. Are we too busy to have joy? Because <laughs> that to me sounded like, you know, here you are at the, the, a later season of your life for this couple. Right. They have health concerns. Mm -hmm. And they're also hearing the message of busyness mm -hmm. and do more, even do more for God. Do, you know, I see, a, I, I have counseled a lot of people over the years that didn't have time to eat well and physically exercise because right. they were working and doing church activities. Nah, and they put themselves trial. away for God. Uh, but, and, and so anyway, so I get, I start to think, are we so busy that we're, we're running faster then we, ha then joy can keep, does that make any sense? Then I, I joy think, can keep up with. I think that's a societal message to be busy. Yes. That unless we're busy, unless we're active, unless we're accomplishing, unless we're achieving, right. we're nothing. And if I don't have time to think, maybe I can't even be joyful because I'm running so hard yeah. that I'm, f maybe I'm just tired. Right. Uh, you know, you certainly aren't. You know, honestly, <laughs> I, I would, I would suggest, whether it's you personally or the, the folks you've counseled, yeah. uh, that they're listening to the wrong voice. Well, of course, because how much, <laughs> well, how much time do we spend face-to-face mm -hmm. -face with friends mm -hmm. that are interested mm -hmm. in, you know, sharing positive information and encouraging your heart mm -hmm. versus quick, really fast friends that you can find on here. Right. Um, 
yeah, there's, a, I, there's a difference. There's, there's a lot of that, but um, gosh darn it, you said something earlier and I wanted to go back to it. Oh, are we too busy? Yeah. Um, gee, I had something really brilliant. It's going to come to me in a second. Uh, yeah. okay. okay, so balancing contentment with complacent. You all know I have a fabulous producer, Ethan Lloyd, that's behind the camera today, so he shared that tidbit with us. But can bal balancing contentment with complacent because people don't. I, okay, right. a lot of people. Um, I hope my mother doesn't get mad. Okay. She doesn't like to sit still. Right. She can. I mean, but that's that was her father didn't sit still. She doesn't sit still. Right. But now I'm gonna I'm gonna give you two things on that. Okay. Okay. The second one's gonna be about the ancient Greeks. So remember to tell me ancient that ancient Greeks. When when I forget this other part. Yeah. Um. A lot of people have heard when it comes to giving that once you make a decision to give, once you make a decision to tithe, you never miss it. Hmm. You know, you give. And, and it's a regularity. Yeah, okay. you give on a regular basis and you never miss it. You still manage to eat. You still manage to pay your bills. Yeah. And you realize you were probably just, you know, piddling that money away somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, I had somebody that was really reluctant to volunteer with a monthly ongoing thing we had uh, and she was hesitant because she said she didn't have time and finally she says I'm gonna do it anyway and she told me this story several months afterward because what she wanted to tell me was she discovered she never missed the time and I've had days when I'll come in and I like to first thing pray, just sit with God mm -hmm. for anywhere from you know 10, 20 minutes at least. And I'll come in some days and all I can think of is, oh, I gotta do this, 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 this. I don't have time. And just like that lady's experience was with volunteering, I found that when I go, no, I'm starting <laughs> with <laughs> prayer. Yeah. And wouldn't you know, everything on the list still gets done. Yeah. And I, I think so often we tell ourselves we don't have time. Right. But we really do. So is it a priority issue or? I think so, yeah. Just a mental block. Uh, I, I, well, again, I, I would say we're listening to the wrong voice. Busy, right. busy, 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 right. busy, work before play. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't consider spending time in prayer, play. Uh, but then it, this is where the Greek, the ancient Greeks come in. Okay. Um, they were very serious about these four components of life. You know, you take care of the body, you take care of the mind, you take care of the soul, you take care of the spirit. Uh -huh. And so in their academies, they were very careful about there be academic work for the mind. Yeah. There would be uh, sports, exercise, whatever, mm -hmm. for the body. Mm -hmm. um, there, would there would be uh, uh, arts for the spirit. Mm -hmm. And then there would be time, religious time, for the soul. Mm -hmm. And when you were talking about balance earlier, I, I mean, I think that's it. We're completely out of balance. We neglect, you know, one, if not three, of those items. Of course. You know, and because of our task, well, and our sports, what we believe our task is, <laughs> and our work, yeah, and and what we've been told our task is, and it yeah. takes a lot of courage to buck the trend. Oh, you know, I I, I still remember being in Dallas, and uh, we had a young man, and his dad was telling us this story that his son was this out of this world soccer player. Mm. And this was right when, you know, the travel squads, the weekend tournaments and all were it's starting of, up. Yeah. And in a city like Dallas, there's so much pressure to excel and succeed. And, you know, and you've got people working 60, 70 hours a week because they think they have to. So here's this guy and he's got this son who's this Mondo soccer player. And every elite squad in the in the metroplex is inviting this kid to come play 
And so they finally chose the one they thought would work best for him. And the father went with his son. His son's in sixth grade. Don't make your kid say these kinds of things when they're in sixth grade. Be the parent. And, and the dad just went to the coach and he says, we're very honored that you want our son on this team. And if we decide that this is where we need to be mm -hmm. uh, and that this works out, he will be a committed member of this squad. And he's going to give you everything he's got. But we go to church on Sundays. And if you have a game during church, he's not going to be there. That's our priority. What did the coach say? Coach said, okay. They wanted this kid bad. But, you know, um, but I don't think enough of us stand up and say that. I remember sitting with parents uh, in, in Dallas, same thing. And again, they've been sold this bill of goods. I got to work these hours. I got to earn this money. That's my job as a dad. I have to earn this money f for my family. Yeah. For what? So your family can have a boat? That's possible. I mean, that's, you know? that's just common. Yeah. And, and, and that we can go skiing in the winter and all that? Well, right. yeah. Is dad getting to go? Mm -hmm. Not too often. Right. Is dad seeing the children and the wife during the week? Not much. And so don't you, don't you get the boat and do all that so that you can have this joy, but we don't actually ever get to get there. Right. And because we're too we, busy. Right. And it, as I said, it takes a lot of courage. Yeah. A lot of confidence mm -hmm. in who you are. And it takes making those choices. Right. And, uh, you know, and that's where the listening comes in. Yeah, listening to God and, and, and that relationship with God. Where else is your strength to do that going to come from? You know, the strength to say, you know what? I am doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. This is a choice I'm going to make and it's going to be okay. Right. You know, we talked last time about can you live with your choice? Yeah. And I think a lot of people don't make the choice. They let it get made for them. Yeah. Well, I think that we see the... The push and pull okay. of, you know, what to do. It can be, it can be hard to be still and listen. You know, you can, you can be. Takes practice. Trying to, yeah. <laughs> you can be trying to engage and trying to live in that way. Uh, but I, I believe that we have a lot of things coming against us to deter. Mm -hmm. And I would always say this to my uh, weight management patients, okay. that, that it would be an eight week program. And I, I would always tell them, cause they would come in and I say, why now? Why now your health? Mm -hmm. uh, well, it's a good time. And we have this program. Okay, well, great. Uh, and I said, well, first, first lecture I would give, guarantee something's gonna happen to you to push you out of this program. Mm. Somebody's going to get sick. You're going to hurt your knee. Mm -hmm. something, something is going to come up to ask you to not focus on your health. And you'll have a decision to make. Stick the program. Even if you're hobbling in here on one foot, you can attend lecture. Mm -hmm. not, maybe you can't work out because you hurt your knee, but you can attend lecture. Or are you going to quit? What did the majority do? Quit? Yeah. Because, like we said before, that work part, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the weight management programs that I taught about were not a, a quick fix diet plan. Right. It, it was you exercise and we eat a balanced food group mm -hmm. um, in the right portion sizes. That's hard. Mm -hmm. uh, it's hard to exercise. Um, it's easy to gain weight. It's hard to lose it. And so that work piece that you're talking about where you're, where you're, maybe you're praying to God and you're saying, you know, help me, help me, help me. And he's like, okay, run. Metaphorically speaking <laughs> and literally speaking. Right. But run, right. move, Put down the 20 act, and run. <laughs> do something different, change your life, evaluate it. If mm. this is too much for you, you know, get rid of it. Mm. What's not working, what is working. Right. Uh, and that's not easy because to change your routines and to change up things 
um, or to no. lead your family in a different direction and say, hey, guess what? We're all doing this now as a family. Yeah. You could get real pushback. Yeah, you're going to. No. And, and you're right. It's both. It's first off. Oh, man, it's hard work. And, yeah. and the first time people, you know, realize that they may not come back the second day. Yeah. So, prayer is work. Reading your Bible and actually being in part of a study group or, or mm -hmm. using research tools is hard work. Mm -hmm. It takes discipline. Mm -hmm. um, and about the only thing, I don't know if you're like me, uh, I joined a tennis league one time. Yeah. Because I love tennis and I haven't played in a while now. Um, but I joined that because it was too much work to call up somebody and see if they wanted to play. But here, by being in this league, I knew just... what time my match was and it was set up. Yeah. Well, our jobs are the same way. Mm -hmm. We know what time we gotta be there. Mm -hmm. And we know how long we gotta put in. We know what's in front of us and we don't care if it's hard, we yeah. do it. The rest of the stuff, because we have to do it ourselves a lot of times, yeah, we don't put in the effort because it's too hard. Yeah. Or there's not somebody holding us accountable. Oh, that's a big one. Yeah. The accountability and there's not a lot of cheer squad. No. Going on. No, especially if you're doing kind of something work. that goes opposite the mainstream. Well, isn't it fun to, you know, kind of have a, you know, glory moment with that new boat on Facebook? Heck yeah. Not a lot of glory, <laughs> you know, in sitting at home. No. Or, hey, I went to church. Right. There's not, the, I mean, there's yeah. internal glory and internal joy, but you're not going to get that external praise right. for folding the laundry or no. putting a meal on the table, especially if it has broccoli in it. When everybody else is bragging <laughs> about their, their raise. Yeah, money. It, you know, it sounds like you're the low guy at the t at the at the table when you go. Hmm. I spent three hours having game night with my family. Yeah. But what you don't realize is how envious they probably are. But and think about you know you yeah. know over here. Wow, that brought me a lot of joy. Yep. But it's in me and it's within my family. Mm -hmm but it's not everybody else. You know, I, in a lot of ways, I cheat. Yeah. I'm paid to think differently. So am I. Okay. Um, and yet, I still have to protect my time. Yeah. And my time with my family. Oh, yeah. You know, that's on me. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to do that for me. Mm -mm. Um, and it sounds like a cheesy and clear you're put on a pedestal. I'm worth it. Well, you're, and, uh, well, <laughs> but you, I am. You are put on a pedestal. Well, because yeah, like but I, I said I'm before, just talking about, in general, no matter what your job is, you're the only person that can protect your time. You're, I applaud the people that will make uh, vocational decisions based on their values and priorities. Too many people, Never their happens. only priority is money. Yeah. But I, I know people that have changed jobs and refused promotions um, over hours. Mm -hmm. Or uh, they just, uh, you know, one guy, they, they were going to uh, send him to another facility in another state. Yeah. And he had kids in high school and they loved Chattanooga. Yeah. And he said, you know what? I, we're going to stay here. Okay. I, I have a story that goes with that because we're running out of time again. We have so much fun. <laughs> um, a new mom, mm -hmm. friend of mine, um, work called her to travel a lot. Mm -hmm. And it was, I guess, hard for her to be away from her child. And so she was really struggling with the decision to continue because mm -hmm. the money was good. Mm -hmm. um, or bow out. Like, quit but was struggling with it I will be a stay-at-home mom I won't have a job anymore so when people ask me what I do all I will say is I'm a mom 
and a lot you get a lot of that negativity these days too and she was talking with her boss about it and her boss said um, my my child um, is in high school now and is struggling with addiction and I blame myself mm -hmm. a lot because I was mm -hmm. gone traveling so from a personal level mm -hmm. you're making the right decision from a professional level we hate to lose you mm. but that goes with what you're saying yeah. you know joy right hard decisions yep. things that don't you know we don't get a lot of praise yep. for you know staying at home and being a mom that's yep. you know people are like and I, I remember somebody told me they they'd uh Never yet gone through a cemetery and saw a headstone that said, gee, I wish I'd worked more. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, it's... I didn't work enough on my headstone. Yeah, it's where you're, you know, know. If you know your joy is through your relationship with God. Yeah. Do what it takes to build that relationship. Mm -hmm. And it will guide you and it will give you the courage yeah. to make the kinds of choices and to live with your choices acceptance and i promise you even if your barn gets blown over every time a storm comes through yeah at the end of your days you will have more peace mm -hmm. and have seen more beauty in life because yeah. of your relationship with god mm -hmm. and all that he has for you mm -hmm. to help rebuild that barn yep okay or Decide you don't need one. <laughs> or decide you were better off with a mule instead. There you go. You'll have to watch last week's episode to get that. <laughs> okay, well, Greg, I've had a very lovely time. Thank you so much for sharing all of your wisdom. I hope that this has been helpful to people watching, and um, our time's up for today. Okay. Thank you, guys. I hope you, this week you'll take time to live well.